In Splatoon, every weapon is attached with a set, sub, and special combination. But what if we threw that out the window and tried to pick just the most broken sub and special combinations for every single weapon? They're perfect kits. Small note for this video, these kits will be the opinions of top level players who specialize in these specific weapons. I will be only making a few of them and you'll see who made them in the bottom left corner. Huge shout outs to Yaga for the kit maker in the first place and making this all look nice. Also be sure to stick around at the end, we'll be seeing which weapons already had their perfect kit, what the most and least pick subs and specials were, and comparing it with the data from Splatoon 2's perfect kits that we did at the end of that game. With all that out of the way, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy, and let's start with the shooters. This first one is a bit of a throwback to the Splatoon 1 Sploo Schematic 7. The Splat Bomb would be useful for poking and being able to farm your special at a distance, which is useful with the limited range Sploosh has. Trizuka is not only one of the best specials in the game right now, but also makes up for Sploosh's lack of range even more. But on top of that, Brian states that it's a tool that Sploosh can use for its more sneaky playstyle, which provides unpredictability for where its Trizuka shots might be coming from, making it easier to pull off kills on unsuspecting opponents. For supports, both Junior and Aerospray were being given very similar kits with bombs to poke and help farm for special. Bursty, a player for F2N states that the boring answer to this is that all short range shooters really suck at fighting at this game even more compared to two with the lack of armor, and their most competitively viable playstyles is just hiding, spamming bombs, and painting for special. He also wants to note that I hope none of these weapons are actually given missile. And Zapple, more mobile, was listed in a similar boat as having a harder time taking fights and other short range shooters, and in this case was also given missiles, as it's great for moving longer range threats or allowing your team to move in, and is perfect for the more supportive painting and spamming bombs playstyle. This is also a weapon he does not want to get missile. Next up is the rest of the short range shooters. Kiver thinks Splatter Shot should be given Fizzy Bomb and Big Bubbler, as Fizzy Bomb is great for poking, breaking through terrain, potentially comboing, and has more throw range than other bombs, while Big Bubbler can be great for resetting fights, safely disengaging supporting teammates, and even being useful for it to fight it. With the special's insanely high HP, it's great to claim space, which is something Splatter Shot likes to do a lot, of course. Splash was given Fizzy Bomb for the same reason Spotter Shot got it, but Booyah Bomb would be a bit more versatile for it, allowing it to displace longer range threats or potentially painted area, which our trade Splash does a little bit better than the normal Spotter Shot. If you've played Endgame Splatoon 2 meta, I don't need to explain this kid. You become a tank with the ability to kill faster than any other shooter. Wonderful! Resident K Pro 2900 Warlord Nolan wants to go with Burst Bomb, as it's exceptional for pro for the combo potential and mobility, of course also being good for a variety of other things as Burst Bomb is a very useful and cheap sub. Booyah Bomb, for the same reasons it was good on K-Pro in Splatoon 2. It helps with paint, controlling areas, and keeping yourself alive. Up next is the 96 gal, with the kit picked out by that SRB2 dude, who I'm sure you guys all know. Of course, with Wall, you're able to fight with a lot more confidence, since it keeps you alive and really helps for 96's horrid RNG, and the missiles can combo with the 96 gal exceptionally well, move the enemies, and basically give you a way in. Last up for normal shooters is the Jet Sculpture. While Burst Bomb and Tenda Missiles was a very close second kit, Brian leaned toward the Splat Bomb and Ink Vacuum one, as it would be better to set up winning situations for the games you would play in, and fits the role of Jet Sculpture better. Starting out the semi-automatics is Obito, a very dedicated H3 player who got 2997 X power in Splatoon 2, and he thinks L3 should have Burst Bomb and Reef Slider. Both the sub and special can do combo damage, allowing L3 to kill easily in one burst, the Burst Bomb gives it poke at a distance, and the Reef Slider can either let it get in or out of bad situations. H3 can get combo potential with Fizzy Bomb, paint further at a distance, poking to back lines, and then we'd be able to farm up the Booyah Bomb, which would be great to help keep it alive with the lack of mobility and can be used both aggressively or defensively, giving h the versatility it needs. And to wrap up the semi-automatics is Dude with the Squeezer Kit. Toxic Mist would be good for keeping people off you and would be easier to use with the weapon's poor ink efficiency, and Big Bubble could allow you to be more aggressive, keep yourself alive, and just be an absolute pain to kill. Next up is the Carbon Roller with Omega choosing to go with the classic Splatoon 1 Burst Bomb Trizuka. Burst Bomb with Carbon is insane for the combos, paint, mobility, poking, and just in general the best sub weapon for it by far. And while you can't burst bomb with the Trizuka for even more insane mobility, it's of course still great for dealing with longer range threats that Carbon struggles with. For rollers, we have Atomic, a 2900 roller player. She believes that Curling Bomb would be of course perfect for it with the mobility it provides a normal roller, but would switch out the Big Bubbler for a Trizuka to help deal with, you guessed it, longer range threats, and the Curling Bomb has nice synergy with the special weapon. For Dynamo Roller, I think Burst Bomb would be basically perfect for it mobility, damage combos, etc. is especially useful for the slow up in here. Ink Storm would provide great paints, especially with how Dynamo could do good burst paint, the Ink Storm could paint slowly at a distance, as well as being able to use to displace people or for damage combos. It's just perfect. And finally, Omega's Flings a Roller Kit would have Beacon, as it would be great for helping its team get back in, and the Vertical Flick allows it to poke at a distance just fine, and Booyah Bomb to help keep itself alive and be able to spam a special that would be great for either protecting itself or getting its team back in. For the Chargers is Ice. You might remember being on Starburst, the team that won the first Splatoon 3 tournament. Swiffer would have Suction to allow for better poke, damage, and farming specials, but would keep the Big Bubble as its 
it's good for supporting itself and the rest of its team. Good Super would have Suction Bomb for the same reasons, but Tenom Missile, since the Top Shot Pain can help it farm specials more often, it's better for a more team support role than Squiffer, which wants to be a bit of a hybrid. My teammate Kiwi picked out the Bamboo Kit, Burst Bomb being incredibly obvious with how well it combos with the main weapon itself, as we've seen in Splatoon 1. Wave Breaker would be insane for the weapon, giving it a little bit of a mini shield if it needs, being able to locate people, control a wide space, which is what Bamboo likes to do anyway, and if you get hit by the wave, you're obviously located, which is nice for the weapon, and it allows it to one-shot with a partial charge. Back to Ice, Splat Charger basically has its perfect kit, a bomb to help defend itself, a special to help defend itself and support its team. It works out pretty much perfectly anyway. Burst Bomb is obviously very insane on E-Leaders. It gives it great defensive capability to keep itself alive. Ending Storm would be good for painting, chip damage that could combo with the sub-weapon or the main weapon if you need, and it just helps mitigate its painting weakness in general. For the first three buckets is seven-time NA champion Kyo, who obviously is going to pick Burst Bomb for the insane combo that it used to have in Splatoon 1, which would be equally insane in this game, and Crab Tank for even more AoE, survivability, and combos with the sub but just an insane kit. Trossasher would get its Splatoon 2 Burst Bomb combos back and would be a solid Zipcaster weapon as it could take advantage of high ground to be even more annoying to kill while raining down ink on enemies. For Sloshing Machine, Kyo says, I love fun and interactive gameplay. For Explosher, I came up with a disgusting sub weapon of Burst Bomb with even more insane combos and mobility than arguably Slosher gets and Wave Breaker to be able to see and damage people behind walls that could combo with the main or sub weapon for insane area denial. For Blob, we have the Ultimate Labber Pika coming up with Toxic Mist to help defend yourself and trap opponents, which pairs well with the main weapon, and Tri Strike for insane burst paint and the ability to move multiple targets or DPS some specials like Crab Tank or Booyah Bomb. For Splatlings, we have another member of Starburst being Bagel. For Mini, who wants Burst Bomb and Ink Vacuum. Burst Bomb is just in general good for Mini, and I feel like I'm going to talk about Burst Bomb way too much if I keep explaining it for every single weapon. Anyway, the special would be Ink Vacuum, which would be really easy for Mini to get in position for, and the run speed up could really help it since it also stacks with a special. Heavy Spotling gets Burst Bomb and Booyah Bomb to help it up close while also giving it displacement tools to deal with people undercover or at a distance. Hydra really likes deployable subs, and mine is one of the best ones to help protect itself or hold down areas while the main weapon is charging, and Booyah Bomb is good for the same reasons it's nice on Heavy and Hydra already. Ballpoint would get its iconic beacon back, making it great with really aggressive comps and Big Bubbler to even further solidifying that, allowing Ballpoint to be more aggressive than ever before, and for fun, you now get Quad Beacon. Finally, for the Splatlings, Nautilus will get Spot Bomb for reliable poke and damage, as well as Killer Whale 5.1 to be able to get itself in and deal with longer range threats. Going back to kill, we have the Luna Blaster, who he thinks has a perfect kit as is and doesn't really need much changes, as it has poke tools and a way in. For the normal Blaster, he would also like Spot Bomb for the same reasons as Luna, but a Trizuka to help deal with longer range threats. I've said this a lot, haven't I? For range Blaster, Burst Bomb combos would be even more reliable with Intensify Action Up, and Crab gives it a Panic Bun, a way to combo with the main or sub weapon, survivability tools, and insane damage output, which are all tools range lacks. Let's face it, Burst Bomb combos would go insane on Clash, and Missile's chip damage is especially useful for it, as well as serving as an entry tool. Rapid Blaster would get the same kit, and while it doesn't really need as much help getting in, the Burst Bomb combos would be even more threatening being at that large distance. Rapid Pro is not included, because realistically it's not different enough to warrant a different perfect kit. Next up are the Brushes, with Spore, a top-level player who's utilized both of them, giving their input. For Ink Brush, they think Torpedo is a little bit better than Burst Bomb, since it adds a bit more utility to the kit, since it can divert attention away from the brush and let you escape or flank. Crab Tank is essentially a better baller. Not only can it be used to keep yourself alive and get out of bad situations, but it also gives you a turret that can help you fight at range and have even more utility than Brush ever had. As for Octobrush, Burst Bomb is self-explanatory and Zuka is also self-explanatory. Next up is the Duelies, where we have Jared, a longtime Duely fanatic, covering them. First up with the Dapple Duelies, Burst Bomb is good for combo potential, mobility, and poking at a distance, while Crab Tank has great synergy with not only the Burst Bomb itself, but can keep the weapon alive as well as poking at a distance as well. Fizzy Bomb for Dooley would be the perfect mix of the curling it used to have in Splatoon 2, giving it a way to approach more easily, but also a bomb to poke and deal damage. And Zipcaster would be great with the mobility Dooleys have with Dodge Roll being a nice combination, especially if you Zipcast to high up locations, you can use the Dodge Rolls to sink down fast. For the Squelchers, Splat Bomb is nice for poking as per usual, but Big Bubbler would be better than Waybreaker at holding an area since the extra HP is helpful with Dooley's slow kill time, and the Beacon could be nice to give gems to teammates, and the Dodge Rolls could easily move in and out of the shield. Luga Dooleys mostly try to stay in a single location and hold an area down, and its kit's pretty much perfect for that while giving it utility with the Booyah Bomb. A top level Tetra one trick, Isabel picked out this kit. She thinks that Burst Bomb would be best for mobility, combo, damn it, you know the drill already, and Booyah Bomb would be even more helpful for survivability than Reef Slider, while also allowing it to move longer range threats out of the way, making it more versatile than its current special. Burst Bomb is insane for Brella with how ink hungry it is and how low its damage is, and on top of that, Ink Vacuum can be great for keeping yourself alive and supporting teammates, 
making you extremely hard to kill with a combination of the main and special. Top level Brella enthusiast Keen will be picking out the next two Brella kits, and they think that Burst Bomb is great for Tenebrel to help with the damage and mobility, but Big Bubbler would be a little bit better, allowing it to control two spaces at once since the shield is more HP and is better for a more team based environment. Undercover Brella will also get Burst Bomb for similar reasons, but Inkstorm will help not only boost its painting capability, but its damage, meaning it's more likely to get assist to regen the shield or be able to fight people by itself. Second to last is the Stringers, with Snipe as a player who's been investing a lot of time into them picking out the kits. With Splash Wall and Ink Vacuum, Tri Stringer would be ridiculously hard to kill and be able to contest other chargers much more easily while providing more team support than its current kit. As for the Reflux, Snipe as says, I have to keep the missiles on it, sorry, it's just too good of a missile spammer not to have it, but get rid of Curling and give it Burst, which is good for movement damage and that's more of what it needs. For the Splatana Wiper, I asked the Hammer Man himself, Arashi, who will be removing the hammer from this weapon. Instead, it will get Burst Bomb for the cool combo potential and Zuka to deal with longer range opponents. Finally is my other teammate and Stamper Enthusiast Storm Hero, who will be keeping the Burst Bomb for its combos but going with Crab Tank for the combos with the main or sub-weapon as well as survivability and the ability to deal mass DPS or AoE at a distance, which can be a ton of useful traits to make this weapon incredibly versatile. Alright then, stats time. We're going to be comparing this with Splatoon 2, which has 46 weapons, and Splatoon 3 is 50. Keep in mind the scope chargers are not counting, neither is Rapid Pro. Alright, now for the pick rates. In Splatoon 2, 24 out of 46 weapons were given Burst Bomb as the most common sub at 52%. While in Splatoon 3, it was 23 out of 50 weapons, dropping it down to 46%, meaning the sub weapon diversity has gone up. There was still a fair bit of unpicked sub weapons being Point Sensor, Line Marker, Sprinkler, and Auto Bomb, but I still think this is overall slightly better than Splatoon 2's sub balance. In Splatoon 2, 10 of Missiles was the most picked special weapon at 11 out of 46, putting it just at about 24%. Splatoon 3 had Missiles drop a bit lower with 9 out of 50, or 18%. However, 10 of Missiles is not the sole winner this time, as Booyah Bomb was able to also get 9 out of 50 picks. There were also only 3 special weapons not picked, Ultra Stamp because it doesn't work, Tactic Cooler because the current meta isn't great for it, and Inkjet probably because of the comparable option of Zipcaster, which is also up from Splatoon 2. Finally, 3 weapons in the game already had their perfect kit being the Luna Blaster, Charger, and Gluga. And while this is 3 down from Splatoon 2's 5, Splatoon 2 had 2-3 to three kits on every weapon, and Splatoon 3's only has 1, so this is also a better stat. The sub and special diversity has clearly gone up, and there are a lot of important kit combo synergies to where custom kits are way more diverse than they were last time, which is insane considering the game came out and Splatoon 2's was balanced for 5 years. Alright, and that's all the statistics. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you want to check out any of the people who featured kits here, I'll have all their links in the description. See you guys later.